Hallelujah. Everybody say hashtag agape strong. Hashtag agape strong. Say do not miss. Do not miss. Next, Sunday. Next Sunday. You'll come and find out what that means. And it is exciting. I'll tell you what. If I, if I lived in Africa, I'd be here. If I lived in Jamaica, I think I'd just stay. Or how about Quebec, Canada? Just go on and stay. And France, y'all might as well just stay also. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo! Listen, if you, are, if you live here in America now, but you are from another nation, would you please stand? Stand. <laughs> Hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty nations represented in Agape Faith Church this morning, plus the thirteen that were in the first service. That's forty. Three nations. Woo! Glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all know why he's running, right? Y'all know why he's running? He's from Iran. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bella, where are you from? Guatemala. He's from Iran. He's married to a woman from Guatemala. Hallelujah. And they both are born again, spirit filled, and come to our God be faith church. Woo! Hallelujah. Not only did he, he from Iran, but he was a Muslim, got saved, got all his family saved. Glory to God. Woo! I might just preach. I'm not going to let you. I'm just kidding. Isn't this exciting? We have International Sunday every Sunday. Think about it. Hallelujah. But we welcome you today to our International Sunday. So turn in your Bibles. Turn on your iPad, your mobile device, whatever you have, and uh, to Matthew chapter 28. And I want to read a couple of scriptures to you out of the message translation. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, message translation said, Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God, author, author, God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life. Making them by bapti- marking them by baptism in the threefold name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this day after day after day. And sometimes I'm sure in foreign nations after day after day. <laughs> After day, sometimes right here uh, at Agape Faith Church, after day, after day. But how many of you know, it doesn't matter how many days, he says, I will always be with you right up to the end of the age. Amen? Amen. And this is what it's all about. September the 18th, 2000, I was seeking God for five-year vision for the church. And I said, God, I, I need you to minister to me. I had all the prophecies that had been spoken over us and had them in my lap, and I was worshiping God and praising Him and, and speaking over them. And, and, and then uh, I got up and started praising Him, and the Lord spoke to me in the middle uh, of my worship and praise, and I was shouting at the top of my lungs. And he spoke to me as loudly as I'm speaking to you right now. And he said, you tell the church that within the next five years, you will be a teaching slash training center. 
You will be a mission center, local and foreign. You will be a counseling center, and you will be a revival center. Glory to God. I'm standing before you today to tell you we are a teaching slash training center. We are a mission center local and foreign. We are a counseling center, and we are a revival center. Hallelujah. And because of you, we're able to continue day by day by day by day. And we're able to continue to add to this teaching training center. We're able to continue to add to the mission center, local and foreign. We're able to continue to add to the counseling center and continue to to add to the revival center. And so I thank you as members of Agape Faith Church. You're a giving congregation. I brag on you everywhere I go. I tell everybody I'm the the most blessed pastor that there is. I, I pastor the most blessed congregation that there is. And that's because of you. Not only is this agape, love, faith, but we truly demonstrate that love. And we truly demonstrate that faith. Because we take those steps when it comes time for us to reach out to others. When it comes time for us to make sure that we're going to make an impact in the world. And not just in our own little community. And I thank God that as a congregation... That you're not caught up in, you know, God bless me and my four no more. You're caught up in, let's knock the walls down and let's reach out to the world. Glory to God. And I thank God for you for that. And I want you to know you're prayed for. My wife and I pray for you. We might not know your name or everybody's name. And we may not call your name out before God. But I promise you this. If you're a part of this church, you personally are being prayed for. And the Holy Ghost knows what you need. And the Holy Ghost moves on us to pray for you. And when we pray in the Holy Ghost on your behalf, then I can tell you right now, His will shall be done in your life. And one of the things that just blesses me so much is how you truly desire to reach out to the rest of the world. And I'm so honored this morning. You know, we had Lead 20 this weekend, and and I just want to go ahead. (laughs) Clap for yourselves, hallelujah. Because I'm telling you right now, our staff, all of our volunteers, every one of you made this such an awesome weekend. You touched lives, you changed churches all over the world. We have, we have our, one of, some of our dear friends here from Myrtle Beach, glory to God, used to be at Cobbs Creek, Virginia. They join us on 7 at 7 every morning almost, praise God. And so, and so we're so blessed to have everyone. But you made everyone feel special, and I thank you for that. But I'm so honored also because this morning we've got some special friends. At least I think they're our friends. At least I like them, hallelujah. But so honored to have them. And so we're going to have them come and just share with you just a minute. And several years ago, my wife, you know, we started a ministry in Jamaica in 1987. And uh, we built churches all over the nation. We, we've helped people all over the nation, helped pastors all over the nation, traveled all over the nation, teaching and training and so forth. But then several years ago, six years ago, eight years ago, I was asked to come down to specifically just to come to Jamaica to meet one pastor. And uh, and when we met her, there was a connection. And uh, I'm telling you, we've been connected ever since. So will you do me a great big favor? Would you welcome Pastor Mary Wildish from Jamaica? Hallelujah. Trumpet Call Ministries in Jamaica. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, Pastor Mary. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to just first thank you, Pastor Whitfield and Pastor Susan, for all that you've invested in Trumpet Call over the last six years. And thank you, Agape Faith, for releasing your pastors, amen, to come to Jamaica. Six years ago, about eight years ago. How long was it? About eight years ago. I was serving in Jamaica and on fire for the Lord, passionate for the Lord. 
But what Pastor Whitfield brought to our church was this leadership process. And this process has totally transformed the ministry of Trumpet Call and allowed us, one, to grow significantly, but more importantly, to release leaders to mm. step into their potential. Hallelujah. And in 2018, if it wasn't for this process, we would not be able to touch Jamaica the way that we're touching Jamaica now. So I want to thank you for all that you've invested. Thank you, Agape Faith. You have an amazing pastor, amazing pastor's wife, amen. And we love you in Jamaica and in Montego Bay. Amen. Pastor amen. Mary. First time I met you, you asked me a question. Oh, you want me to say Can that? Can you part? tell them that? I love it. I use it in yes, leadership. He does. He is. Well, I, you know, I was on fire for the Lord, and the church, you know, loved the Lord with all my heart, but I wanted the church to grow. And you know when you're carrying a vision. There you go. But Come on. You, there's a vision Come on. in your belly. Come on. And you see something far greater, like Elijah, the cloud. Of, you know, he, he heard the sound of abundance of rain, but all he saw was this little bit of rain. And I knew that I was carrying greatness in me. I knew Come that on. I had a global purpose in me. Come on. I didn't go know how to get from here to there. And I was invited to go to the dinner with Pastor Whitfield, and I just started to draw on him and draw on him. And I said, Pastor Whitfield, tell me, what, you know, what am I doing wrong? How come I have this vision for the nations, but we can't break 200 people in the church, that barrier? And he looked at me, and he says, you really want to know what's wrong with your church? I said, yes, I really want to know. He says, you are. <laughs> and I swallowed really big, and I kind of took a deep gulp and I said, okay, here's a man that has the courage to speak the truth in love. I want to walk with him. And it's been an honestly like more than an honor. He's my father. He is my pastor. And it's been an honor. Your truthfulness, your transparency, what you brought to the board of directors of Trumpet Call has been invaluable. Pastor Whitfield, I honor you. And Pastor Susan, thank you. And TCMI is touching the nation of Jamaica yes. and beyond the nation of Jamaica. To God be the glory. If it wasn't for you, I don't think it would have happened. I want to share this. Last night I was going to bed and I turned on um, my WhatsApp to check my messages. And there was a girl that had left Trumpet Call about four years ago to go to the States. And uh, she had sent me a message. She said, Pastor Mary, look what I'm doing. And she was standing on a church stage of a church about 2,000 people. And this is one of the girls that was mentored. She says, a, a number of years ago, my pastor taught a leadership process. And she said, growth without, without change. <laughs> is impossible. Hallelujah. And people are being sent out from Trumpet Shh. Call to the nations of the world. And Glory to they're God. They're bringing that message and that process. So Glory to God. So much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor church. Mary. We love you. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We were in Jamaica 1994, Christmas time, and uh, had a ministry down there and we're uh, ministering to children in the Trelawney district and uh, got a phone call from a gentleman said we want you to come to our home for dinner tonight because there's somebody we want you to meet so we went to their home for dinner and I like going to dinner hallelujah <laughs> anyway we went to their home for dinner and they introduced us to this couple that we got connected with still connected with them and uh, we have traveled all over the nation of Jamaica together. And uh, would you welcome Dr. Richard and Pastor Joy Keen to the platform. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And they also have with them their daughter and son-in-law, Pastors Earl and Jean Ann Keen. Would you all stand and let everybody see how beautiful you are? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning, family. We are from Family Church on the Rock Montego Bay. Years ago when we met Pastor JB and Pastor Susan, when we came to Agape Faith Church, one of the things that stood out to me most was the church's mission statement. So we went back to Jamaica and we coined one for ourselves. And we would say, we are Family Church on the Rock. Where? Prayer is a lifestyle. Love is experience. 
families are transformed and the power of God is evident. Hallelujah. I learned this from Pastor Suzanne. The need to pray, the power of prayer. Sure. I learned from Pastor uh, JB, the power of the word. Hmm. And when I came to Agape Faith Church, I learned it's important to jump and shout and worship. <laughs> <laughs> so, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. doctor by profession. My wife, at the time when we met Pastor J.B. and Susan, had a meat shop. She well, would right. cut the meat, display it, and she could do the whole carcass of a cow. She knew every inch and how to cut it so she could teach her staff to do it right. Then came Jesus. And all of that shifted and so we started Family Church on the Rock. My brother, David Key, now passed on, was instrumental in us commencing the church in Montego Bay. But it was Pastor J.B. who took us under his wings and brought us and taught us not only leadership principles, but principles of just raising a church. And that's, I just worked it out. That's 26 years. If 26 it is, years. 26 years ago. And guess what? We're still learning from this anointed couple. Amen. We was, want to thank God for their contribution to our ministry. And our ministry is affecting the communities in which we live. As you see, we are all about families. And, you know, we are really concerned about families all over the world. But we do have some right around us that needs Jesus yeah. and we are giving them Jesus and with that we are also doing all the other things that are necessary feeding, clothing and just ministering to their natural needs as well as their spiritual needs. Agape Faith Church pastors uh, JB and Susan and all the staff that's here you are making it happen for us at Family Church on the Rock. Thank you again. Glory to God. Thank you. I love you. Thank you, Pastor Richard. God bless you. I love you. Come on, give it up for him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know how many years ago it was now, but we were in Acapulco on a, at a, for a meeting, and uh, we met this couple there. And, uh, and when we met them, it, there was just a connection. And, uh, and we've been connected ever since. And uh, not only are we connected together friend-wise, but you as a church and us are connected with them ministry-wise. And they are touching the world. And because of you and because of what they are called to do and being commissioned by God to do, then they, they are touching Europe, they're touching the Middle East, and they're touching Africa. So would you give it up for John and Michelle Grunewald. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Praise God. Well, we're really excited to be with you this weekend. Lead 20 was amazing. We brought a bunch of people here to enjoy it and to be taught. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I told you to do that when their time was up and they were going too long. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, not right now, <laughs> later. <laughs> so we want to thank you for, for everything you did for Lead 20. If you worked it, if you, yes. if you gave in any, any way, you know, in Hebrews 6.10 it says, God is not unrighteous, he's not unjust 
to forget your work and labor of love. Hallelujah. In that you have ministered to the saints. And you guys minister to the saints all over the world. And you did it this weekend. And it, it, will, it will be a seed that is sown everywhere and will touch people that you may never meet. And I want to thank the people that are back in the children's. And yes, the youth. yes. And when they change a diaper, That's they're right. touching. And God is not unjust to forget your work in labor of love. He, he will bless you. And I just sense there's somebody facing something. You're like, I need help, God. You have sown, and God is not unjust. Come on. He will help you because you have given unto his saints. And he'll and minister. And he's ministered. So we just thank you. We're so thankful for Pastor JB and, and Pastor Susan. You know, the, the personal conversations you have with people sometimes have been the most hmm. effective in my life. And watching how they pastor has touched my life. We've talked to our kids about how they pastor. You guys have a great pastor. And you have a great church. And your church has blessed us. Hmm. Just watching how they do ministry. And along with all the leadership stuff and everything. But we're thankful to be connected with you in the spirit and physically. So God bless you and we love you. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Seems like every time I get around your pastor, he makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't cry much, but when I get around him, I do. Does, that, does he have that effect on you too? <laughs> Then Pastor Michael, where we're on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, and he's crying. That makes me cry, too. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, we love being here. We love your pastors. You'll you hear that from everybody, I know, but it's true. We're not just saying it to make you feel good or to make them feel good. When people touch your lives, it makes a difference. And Lead 20, you know, was just another. It was short, but it was good. And the impact of it goes way beyond this weekend goes mm. way beyond this area. It goes back out to the world as long as all of us who were here take what we learned and, and put it into Amen. practice, right? Amen. And so your church is doing the same thing all over the world all the time. It's not just a lead weekend, but you guys are touching the world through people like us. We, we tell people all the time that there are, there are people who need to hear your voice and be influenced by your life. Some you will meet personally, some you will never meet personally. So how do you touch those that you don't meet personally? Well, you could write books, or you could do podcasts, but that may not be your desire or calling. So what else do you do? Well, you can partner with somebody who yes. is in another part of the world. And that's what you've done with people like us and some of these others, and because of that, your reach is extended way beyond North Carolina. Hallelujah. Just in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, we have over 50 Rhema Bible Training Center campuses with over 4,500 students every month. Glory. Glory. You're a part of that. We do church planting training because we need to have more churches in the communities. We have such a small percentage of people saved in all those three continents compared to the U.S., and so we, we need more local churches like this. So we train pastors to go out and how they can plant more churches, because churches should plant churches. Come on. And then we, we do a lot of book translations. We're doing some book translation starting more this year that's going to get into this gentleman's part of the world. Because And we're going into Armenia this year also because it's closer to some other places where people can come. And we're going to assess whether we can start a training center there or not. So it's, it's expansion time. Amen. It's expansion time for us. It's expansion time, time for, for all us. of you. So you are going into all the world, sometimes personally, but if not personally, through the people that you partner with. So it is our privilege to partner with you in that. And we want to thank you all very much. We love you guys. We love your team. Great group of people. And uh, so just thanks again. Amen. For having us here and be a Introduce part of it. your group if you Yeah, will. I will. Okay, we have some of our team here. Our oldest son, Zach, is right here. Yay! You actually have more hair than Zach. Did you notice that? Huh? 
Well, yeah, not much. <laughs> Sorry for that part of heredity. <laughs> Yeah, then our next one, Spencer, he's the middle child, and he and his wife Sarah are here, and you can tell who got all the hair in the family. <laughs> they are getting ready to have our first grandchild. And so by the looks of those two, the kid will come out like a piece of carpet. That's so much hair, won't know what to do with it. No, we expect the child to be cute. Amen. I told them that right from the beginning, yeah. too, so no pressure. Uh, Amelia Hope is my executive assistant. Her and her family, they have four kids. They're in the process of actually moving to the States now. And uh, we get a little bit more access that way sometimes than otherwise I'm gone and out and she never gets to see me. So and then Mark and Linda Clements here, they live in Florida, but they do a lot of traveling around also. You can stand up. Come stand on. up. We, we've got a great team of people. They aren't all here, uh, but this part made it here for the weekend. And then, you know, we love all of our other parts of our greater uh, Rama team around. So thank you very much. Amen. Glory Bless to God. God. Thank you. Love you guys. I love you, my love man. You. Bless you. Thank you so much. Come on, give it up for the Grunewalds. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. February, I was out in Tulsa at a Rhema gathering, and I met a couple. And uh, matter of fact, we sat beside them at one of the meetings and, uh, and then uh, found out they were coming here. And uh, so would you do me a great, they're from Quebec, Canada, or they live there now. And uh, they're over, I'll let them tell you. Would you welcome Ken and Tanja Taylor? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. Uh -huh. Bless you. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here with you. And as he said, we met them and, and just uh, uh, immediately had that connection. And we're so blessed. And, you know, 2 Timothy 2.2 2 says, Entrust this message to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And I know that's been, that's the heart of your pastor. We experienced that this weekend at the, at the leadership meeting and, and that, and we were blessed by you and through you. And, and that's our heart for the French speaking world. And I know my husband's gonna share a little bit more, but we just thank you, we love you, we bless you, and we receive all that this, the, the passion and, and the love that you have for the world. You know, Brother Whitfield, I shared this in the, in the first service, but we do sense that connection. And um, I'll tell you, I just want to take, before we talk about what God's doing in the French-speaking world, I'm excited about what God's doing in Clemens, North Carolina. Hallelujah! Amen. I really am, because we have, the, we have the blessing to be able to go to a lot of places, be in a lot of churches. And it's not every church that shares your passion for the, the Great Commission. And so, you know, like I said, when, you, when that slide goes up about the trip to Kenya, you guys explode in, in celebration. You're excited about it. You're excited about the nations. How many nations this morning? Forty-something yeah. in, in the services. And that's something you should never take for granted. Come on, Amen. come on. Don't ever take that for granted. And so we are excited. We're honored to be able to be part of uh, the Rama family. And uh, my wife and I were originally from Missouri. We got married when we were 18, uh, moved uh, right away to Tulsa, went to Rhema Bible Training uh, College, and the Lord immediately began speaking to us about missions and specifically about the French-speaking world. And we, get, we had the blessings of being uh, connected with our good friends, John and Laura Mann, who we've known for 35 years now. Um, but I'll tell you something that I really love. When, I've heard three times already your story about when God gave you that vision in 2000 and the excitement when you share. And now today, those things that God spoke to you have come to pass because we serve a faithful God and no word from God is without power of fulfillment. Hallelujah. And, and I know exactly what that is because in 1989, uh, we were back in St. Louis, Missouri after being in France for a month and just vacuuming the carpet, praying in the Holy Spirit, uh, just praying in other tongues and singing in the Spirit. And I, I didn't hear an audible voice, but it was that authoritative voice of the Holy Spirit that said, I want you to start praying for Quebec. Pray for the people of Quebec. And I had never been there. We had never uh, ex had no clue that there are six tenths of one percent evangelical Christians in the province of Quebec. It's one of the greatest mission fields right next door. Wow. And so we didn't know that. But we uh, 
began to pray, and we, uh, as subsequently, uh, the Lord spoke to us again when we were in France. He said, go to Quebec, establish a base, and from there, you'll be able to reach the nations of the French-speaking world. Wow. And uh, we didn't really know at that time even, but we, we found out there's 33 French-speaking nations, 14 uh, territories that use the French language. The French uh, uh, language is throughout the earth, and as a matter of fact, it's, uh, statistics say that by 2050, there will be 700 million French speakers, and 80% of them are going to be on the continent of Africa. Wow. 25 French-speaking uh, countries in Africa. So in 1990, when the Lord uh, sent us to, to Quebec, and, and he also spoke to us about one day starting Rhema Bible Training College in Quebec, which didn't make a lot of sense to the head because that wasn't even uh, happening anyplace else at that time. But we spent 22 years uh, pastoring a local church in Quebec. And in 2007, we had the 17 years after that vision, we saw the first uh, Rhema Bible Training College started in French, in France and in Quebec. Since then, in 2012, uh, we were able to see uh, another campus started in um, Haiti. You can see this is uh, one of our uh, recent graduating oh, classes. praise God. Right there. Wow. They come from Hallelujah. all... 10 parts, uh, 10 uh, governmental departments of the nation, and we believe with all of our heart that God is going to raise them up. Is a matter yeah. of yeah, yes, and and the spirit of God, the first day of school came upon me, and I, I really rarely prophesied, but there was a prophetic word that was given, and to get ready because God is going to raise you up, not only speaking to these people here, not only to change this nation, but many of you will be going into other nations of the French speaking world, especially into Africa, and to bring the word of God. And I'll tell you what, 18 days later, we were with John Grunewald and, and John in Benin, West Africa. And uh, in the backseat of a car with a 20-something-year-old guy. And, uh, and I, he starts telling us, did you know that, that Haiti and Benin are, are very closely related? I said, I had no idea. Yeah, all of the people in Haiti originally were sent on the slave ships from here to Haiti. I said, I didn't know. And so I showed him a picture, and he didn't know anything about that prophecy. And he saw the, the faces of, of these people, and he says... Regardez, regardez. Ils nous ont dévancé, mais c'est eux qui vont venir ici nous enseigner la parole de Dieu. He goes, look at them, look at them. He goes, they're ahead of us today, but they are going to come here and teach us the word of God. Glory Amen. to God. And so just in October, we were there again for the third time in Benin, meeting with the leaders of, of denominations. They represent 8,000 churches. They want desperately for us to, uh, to see a rhema there. And... Uh, with us was one of our graduates who's now administrating Rhema Haiti, one of the, that was in that picture. And one of the these older gentlemen in, in Africa, one of the, the leaders of leaders, he looks at him and he says, you young men are going to come here and teach your ancestors the word of God. Glory to God. So isn't it exciting when that God gives exciting. you vision and it comes to pass. So Amen. we're excited to be doing it. Hallelujah. What, and we're excited to be hooked up with you and we love and appreciate you so much. Thank so you all so much. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, give it up for him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I was getting ready to interpret what you said, and, but you went ahead and did it, so I'm glad you did. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So let's stay with some French folk. Want to? Hallelujah. Give it up for John and Laura Madden from Nice, France. Hallelujah. Several, how, how long ago was it when we were there? It's been a while. Too long. It's been too long. You should have invited us back. Did we not? Oh, sorry. Hey, we, we, were, we were with this couple in Nice, France. We stayed in their home and uh, ministered leadership at their church, preached at their church on Sunday morning. And then they, they, they took us around. What a gorgeous place. What an awesome opportunity it is. Give it up for John and Laura. Glory to God. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Est-ce qu'il y a des gens qui parlent français ici? Si. Well, oui? Oui. Anybody speaks French here? Oh, come and see us afterwards. C'est super. Bravo. Over here, they speak it. Merveilleux. Génial. It was just so good having JB and Susan with us. And we handed over our church two years ago to our son-in-law and daughter. And they said this morning, please tell them we want you back. Okay, Praise so you have to come back. Okay. <laughs> Just amazing. This church is wonderful. We've had a wonderful weekend. Thank you for hosting us, for inviting us. The people that came up to us says, oh, how are you doing? Like it was yesterday we'd been here. It was like 10 years ago we were here last. <laughs> Just a loving church, a generous church, a, a welcoming church. So we, we've heard from John and Michelle. We, we're part of their team for Europe. You've heard from Ken and Tonya. We're in their 
team for the French speaking world. So we just want to show you something a bit more specific. So I've got a, a few photos to show you. We direct schools in France and in um, Switzerland. So here are a few pictures. So we're reaching the French speaking world with the word of God. And we've just celebrated 35 years in France. The, the word of faith works. It keeps you where God sends you. It's really kept us, and we praise God. So here are some of our graduating pictures. So there's some smaller groups than Haiti. Um, that was Paris. Can we go back to Paris? We just graduated our first class in Paris uh, this last year, January, just a year ago. So it was really exciting. John and Michel, they're sitting in the middle. They've helped us with all our classes. This is in, in Nice, France, and then in Switzerland. That's our largest graduating class we've had so many so far, 33 students from Switzerland from like 40 different churches. And these are some of our teachers. Wow. Because we're not just raising up people for the ministry, we're also raising up teachers. And this is something you can pray for, for us and for Ken and Tanya, for, for all the Ramers. We need more teachers, people who want to go teach. Um, and then we work in books. We've uh, had a bumper year, bumper crock this year. 13 Praise books God. we came out in the Glory. French language. And then... The word you gave this morning, Matthew 28, one of the things we must do, we must go into all the world and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The church we handed over has doubled in the last two years. Glory. This is just one of the baptisms they had. They baptized 40 people this year. We've never, we ne in our 33 years of pastoring, I don't think we ever baptized more than 20 in the year, but they baptized 40. That's our ministry. This is my wonderful wife. It's harvest time, you guys, and Jesus is coming back for a beautiful church without spot and wrinkle, and there's a harvest in the French-speaking world. We printed over 51 books, over 600,000 copies of books, and they're also available on audio. If you go to our website, Edition Victoire, and you click on the top part, it'll say, I'll leave audio, because lots of French-speaking people in the world are illiterate, and so they can't read the books, but they can listen to it. You know, and they're free of charge and people can hook up with it. You guys, you can make a difference. I'm a Hoosier. You know, and I'm proud of being a Hoosier. I lived there one old year. And then I lived in Illinois and then Minnesota. And God, I had a desire in my heart to travel around the world. Not to preach the gospel, just to travel around the world. You know, you need to know what you are. I like being seen. I as you can tell. You know? Anyway, and so one of my <laughs> desires was to travel around the world. And somebody said, you got to be a little more specific. So I said I wanted to see the mountains. I'd never seen mountains living in Minnesota. And I wanted to go to Paris and I wanted to go to London. I go to Paris once a month now. And I go to London all the time. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. It's not, it's not what's in your bank account, it's what's in your mouth. Hey! You, hey! You need, to, you need to say where you want to go. And this is a church of sayers. And you need to say, I'm going to the nations. Ask of me, and I will give you the ends of the earth for you, their inheritance. I've gone to places I never dreamed possible. I come from a tiny town of 171 people. I have more people that live in my city block than did in my hometown. But you know what? God's brought me to the nations. And I speak French with a great American accent. And everybody thinks it's so cute. They let me say anything I want. And I can't even though I'm not a Southern, I can speak French with a Southern accent. Bonjour, comment allez-vous? Vous êtes enchanté d'être ici. You know, and so, but, but I, when I speak French, I don't do that. But I tell them what they want to know. Because there's a hunger in France. Not for wine and for bread, but for the word of God. Hallelujah. They're gospel ignorant, the French speaking people. Hallelujah. But you can make a difference, and you have, through what you sow into this church. And I want to honor you and commend you for it. Be faithful in little things. Serve in children's church. Serve in the youth ministry. Serve where you can. Whatever you can find, put your hand to it and do it faithfully until God promotes you. Don't start running out ahead of time because God will lift you up and he'll send you forth 
But you need to be equipped, and here is a good place to be equipped. You've got great pastors who have a heart after God, and they have a heart for the nations. You know, we just had so much fun kicking it up with them. I live in the playground of the rich and famous. I look through the palm trees in my living room and see the snow on the mountain and say, I've been delivered. It's an hour and a half way, uh, you know, an hour and a half way for snow. But I live in the beautiful French Riviera where the wealthiest people in the world come and they need Jesus. And they don't need you to be looking for a munchy handout. You need to tell them what you got and show it with the power of God. And there where darkness abounds, how much more does grace? And we see so many people healed instantaneously. That's our evangelism tool. It's releasing the greater one that lives inside of you. Yes. And you guys have got it. So everybody lift your hands. Say, thank God. Thank God. I'm faithful. I'm faithful. In little things. In the little things. And God's going to open the nations. God's going to open the nations. For me. For me. I'll be faithful. I'll be faithful. Until God releases me. Till God releases me. But I'll be faithful. I'll be faithful. To go. To go. And meanwhile. Meanwhile. I'm going to send my money. I'm going to send my money. And I'm going. And I'm going. Where my money goes. Where my money goes. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, wait a minute. How many hats do you have? <laughs> You want to know how many hats I got? You have to come to Nice. <laughs> you never see this lady without a hat on. Glory to God. Hey, I love you, man. I love you, love you, love you. Come on, give it up for the man. Praise God. Listen, we have one more. I want to uh, come and talk to you. Y'all remember Spiros from Greece? Come on up here, Spiros. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give it up for Spiro! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Good morning, Kalimera in Greek. And I was thinking how would be your name of the church in Greek? It's uh, Ecclesia, his agapis, ketis pistis. It's the church of faith and love. Hallelujah. So, Amen. Wonderful. So I, I want to say thank you to First God and thank you and uh, Pastor Osram and Thank you for everything. It's my third year here, and I'm living blessed. It's in our nations, we struggle with things, and we came here, and I came here, and I, I'm living, living really blessed. And also, I want to say thank you to all the volunteers, all these people, that you did an awesome, awesome job, so you can serve us, and the pastors, you guys, I, I love your hug. Seems Greek to me. <laughs> so so uh, we really thank you for everything and uh, we are there in Greece and Albania working by his grace and we see wonderful fruits and God is doing wonderful things now lately we are coming back and forth in Crete in four miles far from the Titus place and we are working there to start a new church we are visiting also Cyprus some other nations and we are about to visit some other nations and, uh, and uh, we are visiting some nations we need to give some papers to our with our passwords to our families because we don't know if we will come back and, but God is doing wonderful wonderful things actually I have uh, wow. two testimonies from did y'all Al catch that from Albania and uh, we had students uh, uh, it's going well very well actually people their lives are changing through the teaching and uh, we have two ladies, uh, one of her, uh, one of them, she rose up a dead person, 82 years old, when he was dead for 40 minutes. And the second one, uh, she was a young lady, 25 years old, after the class of Believer's Authority, uh, was, uh, she, was a, she is a nurse, so had the body for two hours dead. And she remembered what we taught her, and she went there, was about to take the body, and she, the doctors, they were saying, take the body, take the body. She said, no, stop it. And she laid hands on him, and he rose up from the dead. Said, <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? And praise the Lord. And I, I want to tell you something. It's because you helped us to go. I'm coming from Greece. 
our nation is still struggling with Rome. It, it, it is Rome. And uh, I could not, we could not make it to visit so many nations, to stay so many days outside, outside our nations without having your blessings. And I want to say a big thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Your support sent us in a nation. Your prayers get us out. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Pastor Spiros. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, if you're, if you're here and you're a graduate of Rhema, stand up. Stand up. All right. I know there's some others. See back here. See back here. See over here. They're members of our church. Pastor David Floyd right here. Grad what year did you graduate, Pastor David? 85? 94? 70? 2003. Not 73. 2003. Praise God. See, Raymond's touching the world. And right from right here in Agape Faith Church, we're helping to touch the world. When did, when did your hubby graduate? Huh? No, hers. When? Eighty-two, eighty-six. Eighty-six, glory to God. He's in heaven now, but he pastored an awesome church, and their family is a part of our church. Glory to God. Amen? And so when we here are able through our finances are able to help other ministries go around the world. The Bible said, Jesus himself said in Matthew, he said, you can make friends with unrighteous mammon. And what, that, what he said was, you can take your unrighteous mammon and you can make friends with it so that when you get to heaven, they will welcome you. So when we give in the ministries like these from around the world, then we are ministering to people we may not ever see. However, when we get to heaven, they will thank us for giving. So if you're on the end of the road, would you pass the envelopes down? We're going to receive a special offering for all of these guests that are here. And we're going to minister to them, and we're going to bless them. And those of you that are watching us, watching us all over the world, I want you to know you can sow into the French-speaking nations. You can sow into the Middle East. You can sow into Africa. You can sow into Jamaica. You can sow into Europe. You can sow into Greece. You can sow in all of these nations just by participating. And you can text to give 336-306-8763 and uh, hashtag missions. Glory to God. So if you'll fill out the envelope, make your check payable to Agape Faith Church, and you fill out that envelope, uh, uh, then we will make sure they get it and we will bless them with it. And while you're doing that, uh, Pastor Carla ministered here last Sunday, So, but I want you all to know she's still here. Pastor Carla, would you come just a moment, if you will, and just take a moment and just share a minute. Glory to God. Give it up for Pastor Carla. I know you're writing, filling out an envelope, filling out a check. Now you're trying to clap. But anyway, you can do multiple things. You learn that in leadership. Pastor, I've been so moved as I've continued to hear what everyone is doing. I realized I was delighting in my heart because the Lord is delighting. Amen. We're acknowledging every good thing he's doing. And he's just delighted with Glory. what everyone who's spoken, Agape Faith, you and Susan as leaders, he is delighting in what is happening in the nations. So I just want to appreciate you. You've impacted me personally. You've impacted our work in Kenya. All of you know what a strong partner Agape Faith is in the work we're doing in Kenya. Pastor, thank you. Amen. You're changing the world. Glory I to appreciate God. your loving heart, your giving heart. Thank Praise you. God. Thank you, Pastor Carl. Amen. Oh, you through? I'm through. Wow. I, know. <laughs> I love her. Hallelujah. 
Listen, 19, 19, I, my church has heard this, but I want these guys to hear this. 1984, Susan and I were laying out in the sun on our deck, laying out in the sun, expecting a vision from God. And, uh, <laughs> but we were listening to these messages, and the title of the messages were Tithing the Tithe. And we were listening to them, and she had taught it at Jerry Seville's Bible School, at Kenneth Copeland. At, at, didn't you teach it at Kenneth Copeland's conferences? Jerry Seville conferences. conferences. She and her husband, Wade, worked for Jerry Seville. And uh, we were listening to these tapes. And I'm going to just tell you right now, it set me on fire. And I, I jumped up off the deck. I said, we've got to have this lady come to our church. And she's got, sure, she's got to preach this message to our congregation. And uh, so I called Jerry's ministry. What'd you get me crying for? <laughs> so I, I called Jerry's ministry, and they put me to Pastor Wade and told him that. And, and she and Pastor Wade came and spent 10 days here. And it was like Susan and I went to Bible school during those 10 days. And we got connected with Pastor Wade and Pastor Carla in 1984. They introduced us to Jerry. And, uh, and from then on, then they went to Africa 32 years ago for six months. <laughs> they were going for six months, and she's been there for 32 years. And Pastor Wade went to heaven several years ago, and of course, that's her home. She's staying, and God is doing supernatural things there. Amen. We love you, Pastor Carla. Glory to God. Give it up for Pastor Carla. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for all that are sowing into the world. We thank you for this offering that is planted in this good soil. These good seeds will produce, will produce a supernatural abundance above all we could ever ask or think harvest in Jesus' name. And somebody say, Amen. And amen.